Hi, and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, banners. I've got my um, remote recording device broken. Actually, that's even not on my device. Anyway, um, banners. Well, uh, I mean, they're not as sophisticated as some might think. All you do is you get your banner media. I use, well, I mean, there's two different types, but uh, all, all you have to know is that the one that says something about overflowing or flowing or filling is the one that's stronger one and it will cost more, usually. They go with different, it has to do with how you tear it, so it's a stronger bond, so to say, within the material itself. Now, as far as printing goes, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. You just load up the correct profile, set your settings, and Bob your uncle, the print is going, working, and doing its thing. Now, the only difference is that you won't be able to use the take a pro most probably because uh, your typical tape um, does not stick to the banner medium. Um, also, you can probably notice that the, the Mackie doesn't usually look like that. If you would like to find out how I broke the, the Mackie, and it still hasn't been fixed by the way, uh, I'll leave the link somewhere here. Uh, for you to see. Now, what the what the things are that you have to actually think about when you're working with banners. The very first thing you will have to think that whether your banner needs hammering or hammering, one of them too. Anyway, what it means is you get some of the material that's behind the banner. Well, it will be. But basically, you leave a certain space depending on how uh, wide your tape is, you leave the space, you cut it even, you fold it over, uh, well you attach the tape here or here, you fold it over and you form an edge. That'll help to uh, improve the strength qualities of the sides, but also will obviously increase the price because there's a bit more handling uh, man manual labor. The next thing you will have to um, pay attention to is your tools. Now this tool is what will be guiding, sorry not guiding, compressing and pushing the air out out of the seal that you form when you uh, folded the pieces together. Now another thing is, is when you're joining, you can join two pieces where the image overlap to create a longer banner so to say, but you will somehow have to seal the edge. Now there is a glue and I'm I'm using the 3M edge sealer, whatever that number is, whatever this means, but basically this is a glue-like thing uh, and it's something danger flammable. Anyway, uh, I just used that with the combination of the tape. Now you will have to have the tape as well. Obviously there are several different designs, tapes, I'm using Tessa tape, it's local to the UK as far as I know, so don't, don't catch me on that <laughs> if it's not but anyway they, they tend to cost quite a bit these well the, I think this is like 30 quid or something maybe I could be wrong that was some time ago since I purchased this now on to the eyelids um, it's nothing too major as well you've got one part that goes uh, on the top of your machine uh, that makes the holes and then you've got the ceiling part so they come together like that uh, to form the uh, the seal. Now, the machine itself, depending on how much money you're spending, can look like this. Although I'm not too sure um, when when I purchased it, how much did I pay for it. So the uh, options here are fairly simple as well. This you probably didn't see that the first time, so that comes there that goes underneath it and if I find a random bit of paper let's say place it maybe here here is where you have to apply some pressure and quite a bit of it this is why I'm usually not setting up on the table and I usually do it in one quick motion but, well, this is the result that you would get. Obviously, 
you, if you do that through a layer that you've bent over like that, that will improve obviously how this holds in uh, the banner itself and longevity is increased greatly. You will also have a lot of round bits. Now, as far as how, um, what's the placement of these things? The placement depends on the software that you use, but you can set them manually. I usually go, oh, okay, my lamp just fell, uh, something on my lamp, my lamp just fell, but anyway, um, what, I, what I was saying is that I go by 60, so if it's quite big, then 60 centimeters apart would do a justice to me. Now, there are times where I'm going for every 45 centimeters or so. It all really depends on where it is, what it is, how big it is, what was the actual shape of it, and so on. Because obviously, if you do build them of four elements like that, then there's a quite a different calculation. But I would say, uh, as a rule of thumb, if you do them every 60 centimeters uh, and they're not like really massive, there's really nothing wrong with that. And obviously if you're afraid that nothing is holding on, and you can always try these. All you have to do is attach a zip tie to this in your material. Just take a little piece of the material or a cut off or a left out, something like I will have here, right? So I would get this, I would do the eyelid and I would attach a zip tie and try to, let's say, hang on it and see how easy it breaks, if anything breaks and, and so on. So I would be just trying that and, and, and looking how the things uh, work. But other than that, that's pretty much it with the banners. There's really not too much to it. Apart from one thing, I'm marking these marks right on the machine. My um, tape is two and a half centimeters wide. And it saves me all a tiniest bit of the time, so I don't have to undo the whole roll and mark it that way. I can just proceed with, well, work it. How could I forget? The way I separate the banner of its material, excessive material, is by using a builder's knife, maybe? I'm using a Stanley 99E. I just like the, uh, the blade, and that was that's what I found on the market anyway. But exchangeable blades, I uh, keep them sharp, because uh, that thing goes in quite quick. So you separate it with this, but you need to run a long straight line cut. How do you do that? You use big rulers. Now, the rulers that are designed to be worked with the banner material are specifically designed not to damage the surface or not to scratch it. This is why it will have a foam uh, thing on the bottom, which is obviously preventing it from scratching the material. That's very important unless you want to reprint them constantly. Yeah. Anyway, another thing that it has for going for it is the actual shape as you can see uh, this is where you cut and this is where you place your hand so if this would be set on a desk like that and the banner comes here i would place my hand here and while cutting I, my, my hands are pretty much protected they're safe and this is what this thing is designed to do it's it's I think it's aluminum. It doesn't weigh too much, although it does have some weight to it. Another thing, this, well, I mean, the included measurement system helps as well at times, but another thing is that this specific one uh, ruler has a rod, which you will be cutting against. So when you're cutting, you're dragging your knife against this rod. As you can imagine, they can wear out, so but this one's replaceable uh, and also you're not just dragging it on the uh, sorry, ruler itself so you're not dueling um, uh, your you're not damaging your uh, ruler to have uneven edges or something it sticks out slightly and I will show you better but obviously the GoPro ain't too good with the close-up shots anyway uh, you can get them in different size this one's um, 
130 uh, centimeters, so 1.3 meters, or 51 something. I don't know what's the other measurement. One of the imper feet. What? Feet? Okay. This thing said it has feet written on it, and it says 52. Uh, I'll almost 52. So uh, that's what I've got for the banners. And obviously, a big desk area will help a lot. <laughs> really help that doesn't really interfere with the microphone of the GoPro. The way you work with banners you, and you avoid having a lot of space, I'll probably have to censor that out, don't I? Mm. Anyway, uh, the way you work with them is by rolling them in. So I don't have, this is one by two meters however much that is in the Imperial unit but all, all I would have to do is unwind it a bit and that's it then I would wind it up uh, not this way but this way and I would have the same small edge and by the way if you do not have a cutting mat in order to put the things on because obviously if you go through the media you will hit the desk yourself you don't want to be doing that there's also two options. You can either have a cutting mat, uh, in bajillion options they come in, uh, as an attachment to the desk, as in a stick to the desk and so on and so on. Uh, or, you can simply buy a piece of glass. That's it, a piece of glass. So, whichever shape you want, a piece of glass. Obviously, I would strongly recommend asking the place that manufactures glass panes, I do believe, maybe? to uh, make the uh, edges round or something to disable the option of you harming yourself while trying to work on the uh, piece of the banner that you're trying to create but obviously uh, that will work just fine don't get acrylic that, that's one thing for sure don't get acrylic anything because all you will do you will cut into the acrylic and it will go into bits you'll have the grooves and everything and it, uh, no it won't look pretty can you see a um, media jam? I don't. That thing does. When I'm about 90% finished printing and ripping takes like forever. I guess that's my maki for you.
Now that the banner is finished, you've got your old highlights, hammering, everything. The only thing left to do is to package it up. Now, there are several ways of packaging and the one I'm still working on is obviously this one because uh, in this case I've recycled a packaging material from one of the rolls that came in. But what essentially I want to do is get uh, sleeves in a roll with a um, sealing machine. So it's like a, it's just a hot line that when you press something uh, in the uh, that machine, it will just create a proper seal. Um, well, essentially, now you put this in a box, and that's your banner done, pretty much. So here's a and plan, pretty much. Maybe even longer than I expected. Maybe there are more things to explain about bands. Uh, one thing I uh, forgot to say is they can be sewn together. So you get a machine, uh, you make a big flaw, and you ask for especially big ones, uh, where you've got the perforation in the media as well so to resist against wind, or not resist so much, rather. Um, and you sew them together for even stronger bond uh, if you want that. So there, there are several options, variations of obviously the banners and the banner medias, uh, the thicknesses, the strength and everything. But two ways in general how to test your vinyl, sorry, not vinyl, your banner media is one, is you, you try to tear it, that's one. The better material you have, the harder it will be to tear it. The second one is a puncture. So you take a screwdriver and you puncture it. That's the second way of knowing, obviously, again, if it resists more than the previous material, you've got a better quality material. Obviously, both of them have different uses, as in uh, a one-time thing, a person that will be constantly uh, folding it, rolling it, and then deploying again, would have to have a more flexible type of material. Whereas somebody uses it once for a show or something and that's it, they're done with the banner. So it's a disposable banner, obviously you can use cheaper materials and that's how they are used and why they exist. But obviously for every single type of a job uh, that you've got, you would have to select the proper media. Um, that being said, it's pretty much as simple as that I want to say, but the length of the video I do presume will prove it to be slightly longer than I expected. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.